There we go. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thanks. We're, we're novices at this, so. Uh, one of the things that our committee came up with that we wanted to learn more about was what happens to our organic waste that is dropped off at the 24-7 organic waste drop-off site. And Abby pursued it, and she identified Maria Quick as being someone who would be an expert at that, along with an introduction where she is the health educator for Rams County's Public Health Department. Uh, she works in the Environmental Health Division with a focus on residential recycling and waste. She also manages the uh, County's Recycling Ambassador Program, a volunteer program for residents interested in learning more about recycling and helping make their community healthier. How did I do, Maria? Mariah? Good. Yes, Mar Mariah, like Mariah Carey, or like the song. <laughs> now I'm going to have to think before I say your name. Well, if I I'm sorry. Like, yeah, they call the one Mariah. That's me. <laughs> if I did anything with the agenda, or I mean the introduction wrong, you gave it to me. So <laughs> everything I did right, you also get credit for. So I'll just turn it over to you, and you can uh, do the presentation. We'll have time for questions and answers. Sounds good. So I'll share my um, screen. Okay, so today I'm, it's a pretty brief presentation just about food scraps recycling and um, where does it go? And how does it relate to your district? So there's two options for your food scraps. They can either go into the trash or into food scraps recycling. Um, when it goes into your trash stream, the trash is then picked up by your hauler and brought to a place called the Recycling and Energy Center. All trash is brought to that facility in Newport, Minnesota, where it's processed for refuse derived fuel that we then um, pay XL to take and then XL uses it to burn for fuel. Um, and the other option is separating your food scraps into um, food scraps for recycling. And that can be done either with at home backyard composting or participating in a drop off site. So, in Ramsey County, the county operates multiple drop-off locations um, that are 24-7 freestanding and also at our, our yardway sites. And um, I'm going to get into why separating food from trash is important, um, but I wanted to highlight that 20% of the waste that is brought to our recycling and energy center is food. And that's like the number one most common item um, in trash is food. There's a lot of reasons why food waste is a problem. Um, ultimately, you, it can be summarized by resources are being, being put into something that's thrown away. Uh, so it creates greenhouse gas emissions, it wastes water, it wastes fertilizer, land. Um, and then there's a lot of people in Ramsey County that are uh, considered food insecure. So about one in five people, they don't have ready access to a healthy food. So when we're throwing our food away, um, it's really a waste of a lot of resources. This doesn't super apply to Ramsey County because of our waste to energy process um, and having our uh, trash turned into refuse derived fuel. But in uh, communities where there's landfilling, um, food in landfills accounts for 15% of all um, methane and greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. So there's four main types of greenhouse gases, and those are the things that uh, trap heat in our atmosphere and are considered the leading cause of climate change. So it's methane, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and fluorinated gases. So if you're in a community where their waste is landfilled and then you throw your food away, um, that's contributing to the formation of greenhouse gases. So that's a very quick overview of why food waste is a problem. And, um, I'm sure, I'm guessing you guys are aware of the drop-off site that's very close to you um, on the west end of McMurray Field. So this is one of 10 drop-off sites that are open 24 seven operated by Ramsey County. And they are free for residents to use. We have compostable bags there that can be picked up um, and used to participate in the program. And we also have drop-off locations at our seven yardway sites as well. Those are just not open 24 seven. So getting started with food scraps, if you don't already participate in our program, it's pretty easy. You just have to find some kind of bucket 
get a compostable bag from the drop-off location and then fill it with your food scraps as you generate them. And um, I, two tips I give people is starting off small um, with things like coffee grounds or fruit peels that you generate often, but don't smell terrible. Um, and then you can also keep your bags in the freezer to increase time between drop-offs and that will also help reduce the odor. For our food scraps collection program, one of the big differences between at-home composting is that it, we accept all food waste. So things that you wouldn't want to put in an at-home compost would be things like um, meat or dairy products. And those things are accepted in our drop-off. So if you already compost at home, this can be just like an additional um, supplemental way to reduce your waste. Uh, so we accept moldy food um, and anything that is labeled BPI uh, certified compostable. It gets kind of tricky sometimes for people because they want to put anything that's tangentially related to food into the food, food scraps bin. Um, but things that are no, that are kind of like biomaterials and I get asked about a lot would be um, pet waste and um, parchment paper. Those are things that are not accepted in our drop off. But any type of food, whether that be um, pet food, bird seeds, um, bones, fish scales, all those items we accept. And then I also included a list of common items um, that are no's. Again, like I said, any kind of waste, diapers, bio biodegradable ones also are no's. Um, anything that can be recycled a different way, so that'd be like your yard waste or um, recyclables like plastic, metal, and glass. And then uh, wrapping paper and lint are other big ones that are no's. One of the things I heard that you guys were most interested in hearing about is what happens after you drop off your food scraps. So this is kind of an overview. Basically what happens is it gets picked up by um, a hauler and brought to a place called SET, which is south of the cities. And then it gets mixed and tested and turned into a finished product. So that's a really high overview. And then uh, now I have slides with pictures. <laughs> So step one, being transported to SET. So it gets picked up like any other kind of waste. And so you could probably see these trucks on the street and think that they're hauling trash, um, but it's actually food scraps. Um, they get about 20,000 tons, I think, of organic material a year. And um, what other things did I want to say? The um, SET doesn't pay the county to take the uh, waste. We we would we pay to um, have the the waste removed. So that's something I get asked about. Is like, does the county make money off of it? We don't. Once the food scraps get to SET, they're dumped out onto concrete pads and then mixed in with yard waste. So that there's the right mixture of carbon and nitrogen. So green material and brown material, something that gets talked about a lot in home composting. Then these piles, like these mix, mix of waste are spread out into long piles, they're called windrows, and then they pipe air through the mix so that there's enough oxygen for bacteria to break down the mixture. These piles get really hot. Um, they get up to 160 degrees and um, it helps break down all of that material. It also kills any weed seeds and also pathogens. And it stays at this temperature for about two months. And then these piles are called curing piles after they've broken down completely. The, the um, material sits in these piles for about six months and they're turned over a couple of times and it helps it cool down. And as the piles cool down, then the microbial activity slows down and then it is tested. And once it passes testing and screening, it's considered ready for the market and it is uh, sold as compost. So that's what it looks like at the end. Um, I wanted to show a picture of contamination that can happen at SCT. They do a visual inspection of every load that comes in. And if it looks like there's more than 5% contamination in the, um, in the load, they will reject the load and then that gets sent to be trash. So it's really important to not um, 
contaminate the drop-offs because um, then it's kind of defeating the purpose of everyone who did put in the right items. And for as an organization, SET is required to have less than 15% contamination in order to maintain their status for recycling materials. But their um, unofficial threshold is 5%. I wanted to mention that we have a new program that's starting to roll out through the county. It's a pickup program for food scraps. And um, pilot testing began earlier this year in, in four different cities. And how this program will work will be, you'll create an account online, order a supply of food scrap bags. You'll collect your food scraps the same way you would do if you were doing the drop-off program. And then instead of having an additional cart next to um, your recycling and trash, you would just put your your bag of food scraps inside the trash cart or dumpster. And um, once it gets to the Recycling and Energy Center, which I mentioned at the beginning, that's where all trash in Ramsey County goes. We have, uh, they call them optical sorting machines there. And basically robots that can see the compostable bags and they'll uh, pick those out and then they'll get sent to SCT and the same kind of process. So, um, very exciting. And I can get more into that if there's questions about how that program works or why it is the way that it is. But I just wanted to make sure that I highlight that's coming and our food scraps pickup program website is now live if you want to explore more on there. And so then the last thing I wanted to touch on was some actionable steps that we can do um, related to, to food waste. Um, so the EPA has something called a food recovery hierarchy. And that is the how they think food waste should be dealt with like most preferred to least preferred. So least preferred would be putting it in the trash. Landfill or um, waste energy is both considered least preferred. And most preferred is reducing waste to begin with, so not having any to start with. So um, we can reduce our waste by having a plan for the food that we buy learning different cooking techniques that we can use bruised or damaged um, food for, proper food storage. I included a photo of um, a bottle of honey I have that has a best buy date. The only food that's federally required to actually have an expiration date on it is infant formula, meat, poultry, and egg products. They have dates that are under, um, it's called food safety and inspection service. And they're supposed to be like truthfully um, applied and not misleading and compliance and all that. But all the other labels that are on food that say like Best Buy or Sell Buy, they're more of manufacturer's guidance for best flavor. And honey is a product that uh, doesn't really expire. So even though it has this Best Buy date, um, honey is kind of like an infinite thing. You just have to warm it up and then it's still good to eat. Um, so after reducing waste, then the next best option is feeding hungry people. So donating to food shelves or community organizations. Uh, for organizations like um, schools that can participate in something called food to hogs, where food scraps are um, brought to farms and fed to animals. Um, and then there's some industrial uses uh, that can be done for food waste. And then composting is second from the bottom. So while we do have the food scraps, um, recycling options and the drop-off and pickup program at at-home composting. Uh, I wanna really emphasize that the, the most important thing to do with food waste is to not generate it in the first place. And that's my whole presentation. I try to, try to go quick and I can definitely answer any questions. Thank you, Maya. That was really yeah. great. I have questions. I bet you do. Go ahead. All right. Brad, thanks for the presentation. Um, you said that uh, SET tests the cured piles. What do they test them for? That I don't know. I would imagine they're testing to see if there's, if it's broken down enough or something oh, like that. Or something. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I do know, though, that the company, SCT, they do do, um, tours of their facility if you guys are ever uh, interested. They're highly recommended. I've been on a couple. Um, oh, okay. I also wanted to find out, if, how is the Ramsey County contamination level at the set? Do we have, have we had to turn back, or they had to turn back many garbage can to other trucks? Como specifically? Spe well, specifically Como, yeah. There's something we can do with ours, but you know, Ramsey County in general and Como in particular. Happily, there's not 
um, high contamination. So last year they did an audit of the drop-offs and there was no concerning levels of contamination. Something that is kind of unique about the way the program is now is it's very much an opt-in program. So only people who are very interested in the cause of separating food scraps and dropping off are participating. So that helps keep it really clean. So we'll see if that changes with the pickup program. Yeah, sounds good. I just have one last question. It's about the pickup program. Um, when we started our garbage collection program, I was able to get a much, much smaller garbage can because I was com composting, I was using the compost. But now if we have to put our compost in with our regular garbage, is that going to mean we have to get different size cans or, or are they going to collect more than once, a, you know, just once a week? That's a great question. So the, the pickup program won't be replacing the drop off programs. So that'll still be an option. Um, and then the it's not ideal for, for a situation that you're describing where you were able to downsize because you were separating and would like to have a separate trash cart. Uh, the reason that they, or some of the reasons that they moved forward with this kind of co-collection model was we wouldn't have to add more trucks on the road, which would kind of um, increase like emissions. And it also made it, um, more cost effective in doing it a co-collection. And then for folks who live in like apartments or units that aren't like that rent, then they don't have to ask permission or get buy-in from property management by putting the food scrap in bags into their trash cart. It will automatically be sorted by us. So they wouldn't have to get them to kind of sign off on having an additional cart. But I, you bring up a really good point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what are the four communities that are testing the pickups? Um, right now, it's Cottage Grove and Newport. So, um, something unique about Ramsey County Environmental Health is we do a lot of what we call joint activities with Washington County. Um, so Cottage Grove is in Washington County, but it's Washington County, Newport, North St. Paul, and um, Maplewood. So it's about a few thousand households are eligible to be in the pilot and then they're going to keep expanding from there. Do they use the heat from the um, composition for anything at the plant down there? Can they use the heat, the 150 degrees generation for any sort of um, heating their plant or facility down there? I, I'm not sure. That's a real, that's a good question. I know some places they do, there, there is that like model in place, but I'm not sure how SCT works. I think they have to keep it at that, that temperature. So I don't know that there's excess heat. They kind of need it to be that mm -hmm. hot to break everything down, but the landfill does use the heat generated. They, they had a place where they could do some generation of electricity for a tube of water or through or whatever mm -hmm. and cycle it. <laughs> Just curious. Um, and then we had a, I, we had a question, Alex had a question. Um, he was just wondering about the bags and what the bags are made of. Mm. So I don't know exactly what they're made of, but I'm guessing you're kind of wondering about like the durability of the bags. And mm -hmm. they've- Are they non-grease resistant PFAs chemical bags? I'm not sure what he means, but non-grease resistant PFAs like PUFAs, uh, chemical bags. I'm not, I'm not sure about what like the chemical composition is of them. Are they different from the bags that we use right now at the compost site? Yeah. They are. are heavier than the ones yeah. at the compost site? Okay. So yeah, so if it would break in your um, mm -hmm. garbage, yeah. Garbage, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. So they um, sometimes we call them durable compostable bags. So they're more they're more durable than the ones that are currently provided at the drop off. Um, and they've done some testing of taking full bags of of the of the new food scrap bags full of food scraps and put them in residents' um, trash cans and then track them getting brought 
uh, to, to the Recycling and Energy Center like by a regular hauler to ensure that they um, will make the journey. Okay. And we, we've done an awesome job in Como. We, have, we had one of the highest levels of food scrap dropped off, correct? Is that right? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Awesome. I know. I wish Alex, so my coworker, Alex, he's the one who does the, like, he does more, um, he goes to the yard, like the yardway sites and the drop-offs and is a lot more hands-on, but I, he's out of town this week. So um, I'm kind of filling in. That's why I don't have all the answers, but um, definitely send me any questions that you have lingering, and then I can send them to Alex and his supervisor and they will know the answers. <laughs> okay. That's great. Hey, Mariah, can you email me your presentation so I can link yeah. to it? All right, that's great. I, I have a couple of questions before we wrap up or anyone else can join in as well. Uh, for Mariah, for the, uh, the uh, pilot program, has there been any study on if it's above the 5% or 15%? You know, if, oh. or, and also if there's been any increase in participation? Um, if there's been contamination above 5% amongst people who are participating in the current pickup program? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So the pilot just started um, in April. So I think that they're only just starting to get bags and just getting people signed up. Um, so I, I don't know that they've done any like audits yet of the waste that's come in. And do you, do you have a percentage goal once the program is fully rolled out um, as far as participation goes? Is there like a critical threshold uh, that you're looking for? Mm. I'm not sure if the, the group who does the food scraps pickup program, if they have set a goal themselves, but I've heard um, that for new programs, that are like similar to this, that a goal is to have 10% participation within the first um, one to two years. And then after that, I imagine that like, maybe like 40, 50% would be like a next goal, but I'm not sure if they've set anything like internally. Will and I don't know happen? either how many people participate in our current drop-off program. I'm not sure if someone's collected that data. I'd be interested. I don't know if it's possible since it's there's no tracking of like who's getting bags, but I'd be interested. <laughs> Will there be an offset or, or an increase in, you know, how we have to pay for recycling fees, residents? Uh, will there be a, a, an amount taken or uh, asked for for this new program? No. So you say it's not a money maker for the county. It sounds like it's a money loser because you're requiring. Uh, hauling more hauling more trucks uh hopefully more to participation so you'll have more to pay for less landfill though well, correct but i mean caught you they would still pay for the landfill or the burning i don't know if landfill is free but it sounds like this might be it is not free so then there's another charge there for the landfill except we don't from our first chart they don't do a landfill it goes to the um it, the Excel the burner. route burner yeah. and or it goes to um, the SE set that's a compostable. Yep. So well, I think one thing that's important to 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 um to, to kind of emphasize again is that the way the program is designed, we won't actually have more trucks on the road. It'll be the same ones that are already going. So there's not an increase in that. And then um, the funding we got for the like the robots and the the um, changes at our at the uh, recycling and energy center that came from state bond money, I think is what it's called. And then um, we have we already have like funding through like the CEC, which I think you mentioned. So there is no uh, increase to to residents on costs. That's where I was going. Is yeah. what you where are you getting either money or how do you are you mandated to do this as well? So there's some mandate? 
Hmm, I don't know about mandated, but the state and the county do have solid waste management um, goals and we have to do solid waste planning with like a six year plan with like, I think a 20 or 30 year vision. And we get direction from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and the state on what our goals should be. And um, so that does influence decisions that we make in order to try to increase our recycling rates and accessibility to um, our residents. We at our Como site, we've had people drop off leaves. Fortunately, our largest one was 10 bags that weren't thrown in the dumpster. Uh, one time thrown in the dumpster was, I think it was a cow's head. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if it was Alex or who, but somebody from the county was notified and had to go dig that out. But for things that are less dramatic, can, and just to chime in what Terry asked, is, is there a way you give feedback to the site level as far as like if they, we go higher than 5% or 10%, uh, anything like that? Or is it just overall? So like, are you asking like, if there were a problem at the Como drop-off, would we let you know? Nothing dramatic like a cow set or something, but yeah, just our, our contamination threshold is about 5%. Yeah, I think that that would start a conversation, but from the audits that we've done of all different drop-offs, not just like the St. Paul area, there hasn't been an issue yet. And so that's something I think that will have to be monitored when it comes to the pickup program. Um, but as far as I know for the drop-offs, what I've heard is it's been very high quality. And, you know, what we would hear from all of like those, this, we would hear if there was a lot of contamination, we would find out from SET rejecting the load and then that would get back to us. So, um, yeah. And two more uh, quick questions. Do we, you have any idea when the pickup would be rolled out into parts of St. Paul and which parts? I don't know. And final question, we get a grant from the county to promote compost and we do that through the site, maintaining the site, the bag supplies. Uh, we promote it on our website, our newsletter, we table at events. So we have various ways that we get a grant for that, a small grant. Um, is there more that we can do than these standard ways to promote composting? I think that's a very good question. I'm trying to I'm trying to give you a good answer. <laughs> you give me a bad one too. That's okay. No, no. I I want to. I think it's very thoughtful and. Um, I think that's a question I ask myself too, with my role of, you know, trying to be a health educator and getting people on board. Um, and I, I, I don't really have a good answer because I feel like, you know, you're. It sounds like you're doing a lot of work already. We also live in a community that's very passionate about it. So, do you have access to multi-language? Um, items for how to compost or things like that do we have we do yeah we do have some um of our like brochures and that kind of thing that are uh, translated into other languages so we have um a brochure on the food scraps drop off and our um we call our all categories like a general recycling all different categories of recycling brochure and those are translated into um Hmong, Karen, Oromo, Somali and Spanish. Do we have access to, I mean, do we have any here or have we ever used any? Yeah, like interpreters to... Or just like on our posts or anything in the newsletter or on the website, put the different versions out there mm -hmm. of different languages? We've tried various ways to do that and it's, it's with uh, the international, uh, I can't remember the name of it, over by the fairgrounds. International institute yeah yeah we, we've reached out to them for tra in, uh translators for the mm -hmm. kind of thing but uh, we haven't been able to consistently do it okay well maybe if we just use their documents something like that, that yeah. like that so are they online for that or are they paper versions or like if you could send you know if there's handouts for your table 
yeah. uh, tabling that we could um, get? Yeah, so I have I have paper handouts. I'm not sure if they're on our website or not, but I feel like it would have, I would be able to um, provide them for you. And you guys are District 10, right? Or five? Yeah. Ten. Which one? Yeah. Ten. Yeah. Um, if you give those to Alex and have them delivered to uh, with, along with our compost bags, that that's an option. Well, mm. if you have PDF versions of them. Uh, you have electronic versions of them, Mariah. Um, I'll make a note to myself to ask my coworker if she if she if she does. Because it would be nice for handouts for your tabling, yep. but PDF online that we could figure yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, both ideally, because the ones that I suspect you have, Mariah, were are uh, nice as opposed to the ones we would print out. Yeah. Um, on our printer. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much for your presentation and for answering our many questions. Mariah, you are welcome to stay for the remainder of our meeting, which we usually will adjourn by nine o'clock if you'd like to stay. For us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, we will be done by 7.15. Uh, you're welcome to stay or you're welcome to leave. I don't want to make you feel guilty. Oh. Thanks. Well, no worries. I will hop off and eat dinner. But um, so on my list is to see if we have those PDFs of the brochures. And then I will figure out a way to get you some physical copies. And I'm like 90% sure that me or my intern will be at your District 10 ice cream social on July 14th. 14th. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, thank you for also meeting with us off your standard hours. Oh, yeah, of course. Anytime. I appreciate the interest. I hope that I was able to answer some questions. And um, again, yeah, if there's anything that wasn't clear or if you have follow up questions, please feel free to ask and I will do my best to find the answers for you. Wonderful. Thank you, Mariah. Thanks, Mariah. Yeah. Have a good night, you guys. You too. Oh. In my tip, yeah, but. Um, for the new people that joined while Mariah was talking, I put the agenda in the chat. And if you could be sure to sign in um, electronically, that would be great. And that so just flows Jake, in nicely because it's Claire. Jacob. And I don't know if Clara's with you, Jacob, but the next item on our new business is for you. Okay. Yes, um, so I was reading 